Ah, uh -uh, Brian, super low budget today. Well, here's the deal. I'm out on location this week, right? We're on the road and I was going to have this wonderful plan where I was gonna do a fake, uh, you know, one of my scenes that I like to intro some of the videos with. And then I woke up this morning and completely jacked up my lower back. So here we are in the van, wandering around, just chilling in the van. So we were talking about some games today and you will get a little bit of theater, uh, just miniature theater like I like to do with these games today. Because we're talking about something legendary. And I mean it when I say legendary. I mean the actual property of legendary and also an IP, which is pretty legendary, that has lasted 40, 50, 60 years. And here we are with 007 James Bond Legendary. So let's dive right in and find out what the day is mine. That was a, that was a Sean Connery. The day is mine. It's not from that. It's from a different movie. The best. Losers always whine about the best. <laughs> so, and perhaps I'll get to Roger Moore as well. <laughs> Timothy Dalton's a lot more friendly. He's more like, oh, we're already fast friends. That, name that movie reference. Love it so much. It's great. I'm a slasher. <laughs> but Timothy Dalton, one of the most underrated Bonds. Not the best, but underrated. Anyway, what am I talking about? We're talking about a deck building game all about James Bond right now. So here's the setup for Legendary 007. We're playing in Goldeneye today. Notice he has 006 health. Nice little touch. Uh, first of all, you're going to set up your scheme. There are two schemes for Goldeneye. This one is the Financial Meltdown, which is kind of the main part of the movie. Alex uh, Trevelyan's our mastermind. You have the mastermind card that will go face down beneath him. Because you're going to take one of these randomly each time you choose to attack him. Put your Money Penny cards here. She's just like an ally that you can use. Your hero cards that are made up from the Goldeneye deck from the Goldeneye movie. And then these cards here are gonna be part of the villain deck. I just wanted to show you that you have different henchmen as well as different villains from the movie. So Ormov, uh, Xenia, and then Russian soldiers and things like that. Those are gonna to go together with these different missions that you can go to and try to beat. Uh, things like the train mission and all that. They will shuffle together in a specific order at which point they will become the villain deck. So on your turn, you're gonna start with, first of all, a starter deck with one special starter card as well as some basic starter cards, which are basically one uh, star, which allows you to recruit new people, and then one fight, which is basically your super basic cards. You're going to draw six of these. That will be your starter hand. Then you will draw a villain card. It will flip up. It will go to the on assignment card. Now, some of these will be enemies that you have to beat. Some of them are going to be missions like this. So this is destroy the control room, worldwide financial meltdown. So this will always be played with this uh, right here, obviously. So the mission gets minus three uh, health for each of those heroes in Q branch. You'll look down here in Q branch. If there are any of those, that becomes weaker if there aren't. These will be things like enemies as well, but basically you're gonna be recruiting cards into your hand to get these cards, or you're gonna be paying these cards out to get these cards and attack enemies out here. If you choose to attack an enemy, um, which by the way, these cards can move and continue coming out onto assignment until they push off, and as they push off, to the edge and to escape villains, uh, bad things will happen to you. But you can fight these villains, you can fight these missions and all these sorts of things on your turn, or you can spend your money to recruit characters to make your deck build better like any deck builder. If you choose to beat to fight Trevelyan, you would have to pick one of these cards and suffer the consequence. So let me show you what one of them might be. So if we do this one, you have to have six fight to do it. But it says fight. Each player gains a 006 extra card from out of play. So you go through the extra cards here, Grab that one, and it's actually a double agent type card that hurts your hand. You then see here, if the scheme twist comes up or a master stroke comes up, you'll do the negative effects. This one will do an EMP blast, which will actually make it where you cannot attack him until you combo. Notice that these cards say, if you play that green card, you get that. If you play two of those green cards, you get that. So anytime you do this combo, you'll remove any of these combos you'll remove an EMP blast. Now this is just Goldeneye, but there are six different other movies over here from every single era of James Bond, both Casino Royale, even George Lazenby. Uh, all of them are here and they all play very differently, but I wanted to give you an overview of how the game plays uh, right now. It's just like any other uh, legendary game. It's pretty simple. The, the, the mechanics are basic as well as the uh, production quality is pretty, pretty basic. But 
There's a lot of variety in this game with all seven different James Bond movies to play from with this in the first expansion. The first expansion doesn't offer a ton except two new movies and a couple interesting mechanics that come with those movies, but everything is self-contained within the movies, so uh, just know that you can pick the ones you like the best and which Bond you like the best in play. So that is how you play legendary James Bond 007, right? And that's with the expansion. It comes with it. Now, the expansion doesn't add a ton of mechanics. It adds two new movies, which add mechanics for each game. So here's what I really like about this, first of all. Uh, I'd like to start with art and presentation. Now, you know, if you don't know Legendary Games, they're not known for their production value, both when you open the box and both when you play the game. All the cards have the same Legendary back. In fact, if you took all the Legendary sets that exist, Buffy, um, Firefly, Marvel, um, any of the ones that exist already, and throw them face down, you really can't tell the difference on the back of some of them. But uh, So you're not talking about high production quality. The cards are a little thin and they have a little bit of a, a gritty feel to them. They're not great when it comes to that. However... One of the things that some of the legendary games gets knocked for the most is the choice of art. Now, some of the games like Firefly did uh, hand-drawn art that was just pretty awful, actually. Whereas this one chose to do something that gets mocked in a lot of games, but I will say in this game, it actually worked. It worked for me using stills from the movie. I actually like that much better. I would rather see a really interesting still from the movie because the movies have so many legendary, iconic-looking scenes, right? So, uh, let's just talk there, art and production. Now, when it comes to production and what you actually get in the box, you get five movies in the big, in the base box, and then you get two movies in the expansion box. So, the reason I like that is it takes the best movie of the James Bond films and puts them in um, to your into the game. So it takes the best movies of each Bond. So for instance, you get Goldfinger, you get Goldeneye, which is definitely the best Pierce Brosnan movie. You get Casino Royale. Sorry, I'm messing around with the gimbal here. You get Casino Royale. You get uh, Man with the Golden Gun, which is my favorite Roger Moore movie. You get um, License... I think it's License to Kill. It's not Living Daylight. It's License to Kill. And then you get... Um, Honor Majesty's Secret Service, which I, I'll admit I've never seen because George Lazenby only did one Bond, and he just didn't look it right to me. He just I don't know. I'm not a big George Lazenby fan, so I never have dove into it. I need to probably dive into it, probably the right word there, and see. But anyway, you get the five different movies in the base set, and you get the two difference in the expansion. And so what that does is it allows you to play in a self-contained story, which I really like. So instead of just playing against, you know, you pick a villain and you play a bunch of random cards that are just through the James Bond universe, no. You set the deck for each movie you're playing. So the cards that you're using, the ones that come up in the hero deck, are only from that movie. I really like that. I like getting Natalia to help me in Goldeneye, but it'd be weird if Natalia started helping me in Casino Royale because... If you followed the Bond films throughout the years, there's a cyclical um, continuity loop that happens where Goldfinger is kind of at the beginning, but it's also at the end of Spyfall and all this interesting stuff. So you get this cyclical cyclical continuity of time zones. So it'd be weird if you mixed them. I think each Bond movie should just be self-contained and not really tie into the last one unless it's in that first scene or the last scene. You know what I mean? But that is what you get. You get the five movies that are there. And how they play, again, is just like any legendary game. You've, saw, you've seen that happen. Now, I was not a big fan of deck I'm not normally a big fan of deck builders, but something about this system works. It really feels good. It takes good use of deck building. Now, again, deck building by its nature is not overly thematic. You're spending cards to recruit people, and then you're doing damage. Now, the damage does become a little bit more thematic. For instance, in Goldeneye, when you use the tank, it's an X value, and it's based on what your highest defeated enemy is over there to the right. And so having the tank be worth seven damage is pretty awesome, right? Or having uh, Judy Dench's M give you like six stars when you use her is pretty great. But here's what I really like. Each of the movies feels different. They all feel reminiscent of how the movies play on the theater, right, or on the screen. So each one feels different. So Goldeneye doesn't feel like Goldfinger. Even though, yes, you're still recruiting and fighting, the way the enemies come out, the way that the, uh, the, 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 the cards in the hero deck are all super different. They're gold, Goldfinger's much more straightforward. Goldeneye has a lot more twists. So you have these EMP uh, strikes that will happen, and you can't attack Alex Trevelyan until you get rid of the EMP strikes, which is pretty great. So all in all, top to bottom, let's break down this review. So... It looks okay. It's it's legendary. Don't don't get excited about the quality. Don't get excited about the art. Except I do like the the uh, photographic stills from the movies. 
mechanics wise it is a solid deck builder it's one of the better deck builders the way the cards will scale across that on uh, on on mission or on assignment section and get potentially worse the one thing i've noticed though is it's pretty easy like it's a relatively easy game especially at two players you really don't uh, there was never a moment where I thought, oh man, we are about to lose in one turn. We actually handled, every time we play, actually, and I'm trying to think through the different movies we've played, each one has been relatively easy because if you know what you're going to do, you can go ahead and plan ahead and combo off each other's cards, etc. cetera. Uh, if you're thinking ahead, be like, I can remove that EMP blast if you can get ready to attack him next turn, etc. So there are a lot of things that you can do like that. Now, the new expansion, I will say this adds the two movies, but it adds some really interesting mechanics such as you can impersonate characters. You can, uh, they can be like double agents, etc. There's a virus that goes around and people can get infected. So it adds a lot more wonky mechanics, but it doesn't add a huge amount of stuff. So if you like the first one, definitely go ahead and get the second one. It makes no sense not to get all these movies. Now you'll have every single person that's played James Bond. Um, yeah, I'm curious if they're going to do a uh, Never Say Never because, you know, that was Sean Connery, but it was a remake of Thunderball or something. I don't remember. But the point is, it'd be nice if we got more movies out there because the movies are thematic. They do play like the stories of the movies. They do have a lot of things like the drug cartel. The huge extra card deck that happens. I love that Alex Trevelyan can give you a 006 agent, which will jack up your characters because he's a double agent. So uh, that is legendary 007. Sum it up on this. It looks eh, really great to play. It's a very fun deck builder. If you're into deck building, definitely check this one out. If you're not into deck building, but you're into the 007 um, franchise, check this one out. You're going to enjoy it. But I will say that I would, had I had you shown me this before, uh, I played it. I'd have been like, eh. But then after playing it, I was like, oh, this is staying in the collection, and I'm going to keep getting these these expansions as they come because I really, really enjoyed uh, this deck builder. It's a really fun one. I think you should check it out. So I'm Brian Drake here on the Dice Tower, back pain and everything, taking a look at 007 Legendary. Until next time, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, etc. at Dice Tower Brian. We'll see you. I'm still here.